And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here, and today we're going to be doing another Kickstarter preview. This time we're going to be looking at Titans of Industry by Gozer Games. Uh, and now this is a company that has Kickstarted before, but this time they're going to be delving into a little more of a Euro-style game, in which players are going to be taking on the role of a business mogul who is buying or making goods from factories, taking those goods and trying to sell them back to different businesses that either they control or their opponents control in order to earn money and victory points before the end of the game. Uh, it has kind of a unique strategy of trying to buy different buildings, stacking them on top of each other, and some secret agenda cards which you can use in order to try and further your advantage towards winning at the end of the game without your opponents knowing what exactly it is you're trying to do. So real quick, why don't we get into the components and the gameplay of the game. Remember that these are going to be prototype, not final quality components. We'll go and see how it plays, and then we'll come back and get my opinion on it at the end of the video. So here you are looking at the components of Titans of Industry. Now this is going to be a worker placement game in which players are trying to collect goods in order to sell those goods to different businesses. So they're going to have factories which will produce goods, and then they're going to take those goods and turn around and sell them to a business in order to earn victory points or money or both. So as you can see here we have a board layout and on this board there's going to be several spots for taking actions. At the top here we're going to have spots for collecting resources not through factories uh, but rather through just resources that will accumulate each turn. At the beginning of each turn these spots will add one resource of each type to them and you can go there in order to collect those resources. In addition you're going to see a area here which allows you to place onto a factory where someone has already played. Usually each factory can only hold one worker, but if you use this spot you can place one worker here and then take another worker and place it on somebody else's factory. Over on the right hand side here you can see two services and these are going to be things where you can go place a worker and for doing so you could spend three money to buy any two goods or if you place on the lower one you can spend two money to get what are called corporate strategy cards. And at the beginning of the game, you're going to have one of these corporate strategy cards, and you can acquire more by going here and paying money and or goods. And these corporate strategy cards are going to give you ways of earning more victory points throughout the game. So, for example, this one says that you're going to get 3 VP for every $3 traded to the supply a maximum of 12 victory points. Or we have another one here. Receive one victory point for each factory you own. Factories covered by other buildings in a stack count towards this limit. So... You can get more cards which give you a way to strategize to change your game throughout the play, you know, having different ways of earning victory points which may not be known to other players. On the left hand side here you have a train worker spot. You would place a worker here and then in two turns you would get another worker for two dollars, which is a way to get more workers out of this central area. You start with four and you can earn more. In the areas down here, you can see four different spots in the advances section, and these are going to be areas where you can get different benefits which may help you on future turns. For example, if you were to place a worker in this temporary worker spot, on the next turn you would have an extra worker who is only good for one turn. The next spot is going to allow you to change yourself in the turn order, which will usually change automatically, and if you're first, you will typically go to last at the end of the next round, but instead of doing so, you could use that spot to move yourself to second so that the next player goes last the next round, and you advance back to first. These last two spots are going to be for what are called R&D chits, and these are going to go on to the factories and businesses that you use in the game in order to make goods and sell goods. So real quick, why don't we go into what those different cards do. I'll show you them here. They're in these stacks to my, uh, to my right. And then we can go over how the game plays from that point on. Much of the game of Titans of Industry is going to focus around these cards. And here you can see there's three levels of each, blue and brown cards. Blue cards are going to be factories, which are going to be how you produce your goods. And brown cards are going to be businesses where you can sell goods. And they're usually going to be stacked one on top of another like this. At the beginning of each round, you're going to reveal a number of cards from each stack equal to the number of players. So in a five-player game it would be five cards, but let's for brevity's sake say we're in a three-player game. We would reveal three factories, and we would reveal three businesses. And the first portion of each round of the game is going to be buying these different buildings. 
and in order to buy them you're going to have to pay the cost which is located in the upper left hand corner of the cart. All level one buildings or level one factories are going to cost one, all level one businesses will cost one, uh, and you will pay that money to the bank and take this and put it in front of you. Now each player has five imaginary building slots in front of them, so you can only have five buildings, but as the game goes on you'll be able to build on top of your previous buildings uh, when they are a higher level. They will have a higher cost, being two if it's a level two building, and they'll have a level two on the back. You can build factories on top of businesses or businesses on top of factories, changing them out however you like as long as the next level is a higher number. In addition on these cards you're going to see several other things. You'll see an upkeep, which in every few turns, in turns 3, 5, and 7, you're going to have to pay upkeep. So you'll have to pay out in order to keep all of your buildings or take loans in order to do so, but loans are negative points. On all factories you're going to see some type of goods in the center, so this one is a question mark, which says that if you put a worker on here, if I were to place a worker on here, and anyone can use anyone's factories, you would produce one of any single good that was producible this turn. So you'd look at what else could be produced during the turn and you would be able to produce one by using this. In the bottom left you're going to see the number of victory points that you'll get for the card at the end of the game and at the bottom right you will see a spot for an R&D uh, chit which is going to increase the production of this card by one good of whatever type it produces. Other cards may look slightly different, so here we have a different factory. This one's going to produce any one basic good which is wood, stone, or brick and it's going to produce a tar and if it were to have an R&D cube on it it would produce an additional good of either of those types. And remember anyone can use your factory so if I were to take this factory even if I'm green yellow may decide to use my factory on their turn which would lock me out of it because only one player may use each factory unless they take that special spot on the board. Businesses are much like factories except for that instead of producing goods you're going to sell to them. They have all the same markers on them. In here you can see the cost, the upkeep. These are the goods you're going to need to sell to it. And when you sell to a business you're going to earn either money or victory points. You can get four money for selling these three goods or two victory points for selling these three goods. An R&D chit on the card would increase either the money or the victory points that you get for selling to it by one. However, unlike factories, businesses may have multiple workers on them. If one worker is there, that player may sell one time to that business. But if two workers are there, each player may sell twice the same set of goods twice to that business, earning either twice the income or twice the victory points or a combination of both. So you're going to go through in player order, each player is going to have a chance to buy one of these buildings using money that they will have, and they would pay the money to the bank, take the building and put it in front of them, until everybody decides to pass in order. After everyone passes in order, you would move on to the next stage of the game. Just remember though that in future rounds you'll come up on level 2 cards, and level 2 cards may be built over level 1 cards, transferring all of the properties, like R&D chits, of that card up to the next card. After players have had a chance to buy buildings, they're going to move on to the next step of the round, which would be placing workers. And Each player starts the game with four workers, which they will be able to use to do things on their turn. And as I said before, you can use all of those spaces on the boards, or you can place on your own factories or other players' factories in order to produce goods, which would be wood, brick, stone, tar, concrete, steel, glass, and the R&D chips, which you can only get from placing on the board. After every player has gone through and placed all of their workers, which could have different amounts dependent on whether or not you took more workers in this previous action, you're going to move on to the next step of the game, which is actually receiving your resources. So let's say green had placed here they would be able to take this wood from the board and add it to their own personal supply. Or let's say that a player had played on this factory here. Uh, that's a bad example, but let's use this one. Let's say yellow had placed on this factory. At this point, they would be able to take their one basic good and their concrete. So they'd take a concrete from the supply and they would decide which basic good they wanted, maybe dependent on what they were trying to sell on their turn, and let's say maybe they wanted to take a brick. After everyone has collected all of their resources, you're going to move on to using businesses and services on the board. So now we're going to go and resolve all of the services over here and or businesses and you can do those in either order dependent on how it best benefits you. So if you need to buy goods in order to sell to a business, you could do that. Or if you want to get your corporate strategy card before you check and see what you're going to sell, that may be another good idea. But then players who have placed onto different businesses are going to be able to sell. So let's say that purple had placed onto this business. They need to sell any two basic goods for two money or two VP. So let's say they had accumulated a brick and a wood. They would trade that in. 
to the supply, and they would take their two money from the supply, adding it to their own personal area. After everyone has done their services and businesses, you're going to move on to uh, receiving items from the advances area. So now if anybody had placed here to get the, the temporary worker, they would take that worker and add it to their area. You would change turn order and you would get these different R&D chits to add to your businesses or factories to make them better. After that, on turns 3, 5, and 7, you can see here on the board, there's a nice track marker. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right here. It keeps track of the years. When you reach turn 3, at the end, you can see there's a dollar sign. You're going to have to pay money for each of your different buildings that you have, adding up all of the top upkeeps for all the top cards on your floor. So if I were to have these three businesses, I would have to pay five money in upkeep at the end of this turn. After that, you're going to shift player order, rearranging it so that the first person shifts to the back and everyone else scoots forward. And you're going to go ahead and replenish this goods row on the board, moving on to the next turn. One caveat though, if you ever run out of money and aren't able to pay for something, you're going to have to take what are called loans. Loans get you three dollars, but you need to pay five dollars in order to get rid of them, and if you don't, they are for negative five victory points at the end of the game. Whoever best manages to get the goods that they need and sell them to the appropriate businesses, earning the most money and victory points, is going to be the winner. So there you have it, Titans of Industry by Gozer Games. Now this is a medium, maybe light-ish, Euro weight game, uh, one that I personally find enjoyable over my couple plays of it, uh, and one that I think is probably suitable for introducing new players to the Euro genre while maintaining a level of engagement for medium to heavier weight players. There's definitely different levels of strategy that can be employed here. If you're a, a newer player, you can just you know see the interest in picking up new buildings, trying to get the goods that you need in order to simply sell them to either your own buildings or your opponents, but there's also an aspect of taking the factories that maybe your opponent needs, preventing them in, from getting the goods that they might need in order to sell to get their victory points. So you can use either a less direct or a more confrontational approach to scale the level of complexity in the game. If this sounds like something that might be interesting to you, check it out on their Kickstarter page. They'll have several different levels to pledge at and several different bonuses which you can try and get for pledging your money. So I'm sure they'd appreciate it, and if it sounds like something good for you, go ahead and pledge. Gozer Games, Titans of Industry.